So why don't we believe in Christianity? It offers to serve you, and we're not looking for that. We want to serve God. The bottom line in Judaism is Ivdu es Hashem b'Simcha, to serve God. To serve God is a privilege. To serve God is a purpose. To serve God is is a, a reason to to exist and to be, and so on and so forth. Whereas Christianity promises that God will serve you. So imagine two thousand years ago coming to the Jews of Israel and saying, we have good news. You needed 613 mitzvahs to get to heaven. You can get to heaven without them. And that would be good news if the premise had been correct. But Jews never observed mitzvahs in order to get to heaven. And the Mishnah says, don't be like a servant who serves for the sake of a reward. So it was never a Jewish thought to try to get to heaven in exchange for mitzvahs. The mitzvahs are there because this is what God needs from us and we can serve him by doing them. Now imagine somebody comes along and says, you know God needed you in 613 different ways. Well, he doesn't need you anymore. That would not be good news. So why don't we believe in Christianity? It offers to serve you, and we're not looking for that. We want to serve God. That, number one, although the Christian idea is very, very different than the Jewish idea, it is totally based on a, a concept that is at least analogous in Judaism. And we, in fact, do believe that the original sin had a cosmic repercussion. It was an extremely significant event. Adam uh, and Eve were created as perfect beings who were totally connected to God. And the sin created an unbridgeable distance, a chasm, a separation. Uh, so far, we and the Christians are walking on the same path. But at this point, we now differ and we now switch directions. Christianity sees original sin as an irrevocable, unchangeable blight on the holiness of the human soul, creating an impossibility of connecting to God other than faith in Jesus, etc. Judaism teaches it in a very, very different way. We believe that the essence of man's divine soul remains untainted. It remains holy. It remains unified with God. It remains radiant. What the sin introduced was kind of a secondary soul that the Tanya and the books of Kabbalah refer to as the animal soul, in which our holy soul strives to be with God but we introduced into ourselves negative drives of egotism, selfishness, hedonism, that are kind of pulling us away, imprisoning us, making it very, very difficult to achieve the communion that the holy, godly soul still desires to achieve. So as a result, instead of looking at man as hopelessly irredeemable, Judaism has a very, very hopeful vision because it basically says, listen, the holiness that you were born with, the holiness that was put into Adam, is still there. There is a drive that can be pulling you away. But you have the freedom, you have the capacity to liberate yourself from that drive and achieve holiness and perfection and communion with God. So as a result, Judaism on one hand does remind us that we have many, many negative forces within us that we have to fight. Judaism is realistic. We don't assume that we are already in a state of perfection. On the other hand, Judaism teaches us that if God gave us the challenge, God also gave us the wherewithal to be able to surmount that challenge. So I think the fundamental difference is that Christianity views original sin as a taint on the spiritual essence of man. We regard original sin as creating a tension, an opposition, and a force that we have to overcome. But the power of the godly soul can still overcome it. And I think that is why Judaism overall 
is a much more optimistic vision, but at the same time a realistic one, saying there's a lot of work, but you can achieve it. So the concept of original sin does not exist in Judaism, the words. There is clearly the story, Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, and they eat from the tree of knowledge, and the Judaism definitely feels that has changed the consciousness of the world. That from here on, the human being would have to work for a living, there'd be pain in the world, there'd be death in the world, and we'd have to repair the world till we bring it to the state of Mashiach. Where I think, and I'm not here to criticize other schools of thought, but I think where the distortion came to be is that some took that almost literal, that now the devil has taken control and sin has controlled the human being. But let's not forget the fact that the human being is created in the divine image even after this tree of knowledge. And the concept of a Yetzirah, of the evil inclination, is only introduced in chapter 2 in the story of the flood. Yetzir leva adam ram and urav. So when you read the Bible right now, the human being created the divine image. A chapter later, you also have another voice. So when you look in Tanya, he never says the animal soul is the dominant one. It may be the easiest one if you're lazy, but there's two equal forces. And the distortion that I believe, I may, it could, could have been even some Jewish thinkers maybe didn't fully understand that, was that they gave more credence to the evil part. Evil is stronger. Now, I understand the logic, because when you look at yourself, I said, tell me, what's stronger inside of you? Your good temptations or your evil ones? We all know evil, when, it's, when you get consumed and seduced by something, it, it becomes more powerful than anything. But that's your feeling about it. So from a Jewish point of view, I mentioned, well, I don't know if I should refer, but the fact is the, human, the world did not become an evil place. It's still a garden. In the words of the Rebbe, Basilegani, it's still a garden. However, the divine is concealed now in the garden, whereas once upon a time it was revealed. So I don't think this is a small difference, because one would give evil power, and you know, let's, let's be honest, the Christians believe the only way to counter that is to believe in a Jew, to forgive you for your sins. And we Jews never embraced that, obviously, because we felt that you don't need to believe in a Jew, we know what Jews are like, so we need to connect to God, because God is working in, in us and you can fight the evil in the world. So we acknowledge there's evil, but we never acknowledge that evil is more powerful than good. Never. Now, I would believe, I didn't do enough research, that there are probably some Jewish thinkers that would lean a little more this way, even though I wouldn't say as far as the Christians, but Hasidus for sure. Like, for example, Hasidus and Musr. The two legitimate approaches. Musr says the focus should be on the lowliness of a person and deal with your negative traits and your, your impulses and fight them. And Hasidus says, yes, we know you have negative impulses and you have to work on them, but bring more light into your life. So subtly, you can also argue which is the dominant one. Um, I'm not comparing it to original sin, but it's a similar idea, how we look at the person. Do I look at you as potentially a troublemaker and how do I curb that and more discipline? Or do I look at you as a potential angel and try to cultivate that. And obviously that requires some discipline, weeding the garden. But the focus is on the flowers, not on the weeds. And some do focus on the weeds.